Well, I first heard that touching the earth can change your actual physiology. I thought it was complete rubbish. But I've got scientific studies here to show you that it's not. And I'm also going to go into the physics of how touching the ground actually and literally makes your blood flow change step by step so that you can understand the exact mechanism by which this contact with the earth actually changes your physiology. Now, in order for the mechanism to make sense, we do have to establish some knowledge first about blood flow and electricity. I'll start with blood flow. So the behavior of fluids that are flowing is the study of something called rheology in this context. We study this a lot in things like dermal fillers because by making a dermal filler flow more easily or making it more solid, we can make it better for different parts of the face. Now, when the fluid, in this case blood, is thicker, it means that it doesn't flow as easily, to put it in layman's terms. This in turn can have an impact on the heart. Imagine, for instance, you're, I don't know, you're pumping water out of a well. You have to put a lot of force into that pump. Now imagine that that water suddenly turns to thick honey. Do you think that makes it harder or easier to pump? Obviously, it's going to be harder. Now, replace the pump in that analogy with a heart, and you instantly get why the thickness of blood is important. We call this liquid thickness the viscosity. And viscosity and rheology are highly interlinked. A dermal filler that's incredibly viscous is very, very thick, and it can stand up like jelly. A filler that's very runny and more like water is not very viscous at all. It flows like a river. Now, both of these will then have very different rheological properties and behaviors. So now that we get rheology, which is an aspect of something called fluid dynamics, we need to better understand something called electrostatics. This is because blood viscosity is highly influenced by the surface charge of red blood cells. When they pick up charge, they're all going to pick up the same charge because they all have the same structure. And because all charges are the same, they all repel each other. You can see this exact phenomenon when you touch something called a Van de Graaff generator. Your hair collects the electrostatic charge because all the strands have the same structure. They all get the same charge, and the same charges all repel each other to make the hairs move away from each other and stand up like some sort of magic trick. You don't go to the science museum and get handed a pamphlet on electricity. You go to the science museum and you put your hand on a metal ball, your hair sticks up straight, and you know science. Now, translate this analogy so that the hairs are swapped for red blood cells, and you'll understand what happens when they all have the same charge each. The repulsion between all the blood cells makes them flow past each other very easily because they don't bump into each other. If they didn't have the same charge, in a significant way, they can get much closer to each other and make it more likely they aggregate as a lump rather than individual cells uh, all very well distanced from each other. So we can understand then that if we change the blood so the cells don't repel each other anymore and can clump up together and be thicker or more viscous, we can make it harder for the heart to pump everything around yeah, the, the body, the blood vessels. This is why the charge at the red blood cell surface is so important for health. Now the next question is, why or how do the red blood cells have an electrical charge in the first place? Well, the membrane surface of the cells is coated. It's covered in glycoproteins, which is a sugar combined with a protein. These create a slight negative charge on the surface, which can create a small repulsion effect because multiple negative charges, like I said, repel each other like multiple north ends of a magnet all repelling each other. And when things like antibody responses come about during times of disease and the red blood cells aggregate together, one of the reasons this happens is because of the bioelectric characteristics of our cells creating, say, charges and neutralizations, repulsions and attractions. And the charge on these blood cells, which can be measured as something called a zeta potential, is highly influenced by the environment in the body. Things like the level of free radicals in the body, for example, or pH changes, acidity changes, or electrolyte imbalances, or oxidative stress, 
or pathological conditions or even something much more basic like temperature. All of these can affect the charge. Now, free radicals, by the way, if you don't know what they are, they're essentially an unstable molecule that's become unstable because of electrical charge that it's carrying. It is more complex than that, I, I know, um, but I want to keep this as short as possible if I can. So when the red blood cells are not in a good place, electrostatically speaking, we make the heart's job much harder. Red blood cells should all have the same negative charge uh, on the surface so they don't touch and we get nicely flowing blood. If that changes, they can then touch and therefore clog up easier so the blood becomes thicker and our heart works harder. So where does touching the earth come into play in all this? Well, have you ever been told by people that when you're, say, filling your car up with fuel, you should ground or earth yourself first so you don't give an electrostatic shock when the petrol is coming out that could cause an explosion? This involves neutralizing any electrical charge that you've picked up from, say, rubbing on the, on the car seat. And if you don't neutralize this before touching the petrol or the, the fuel pump, the spark that comes out of you could ignite the fuel, they say. Now, touching the earth in this example allows us to understand neutralization better. It's a way of allowing charge to freely flow between you and the earth so you can normalize the charge you carry, again, in layman's terms. Now, the earth has basically an, an infinite ability to neutralize in this way because of something called the global atmospheric electrical circuit. So when we take advantage of this and touch the ground, we can make charge flow between us and the earth such that the red blood cells hit their, shall we say, electrical reset button and we return the viscosity of the blood back to normal. But how do we do this nowadays considering we're not cavemen anymore wandering around all the time barefoot? Well, if you can't get outside, there's still ways you can do it from the inside. One of the easiest ways is to use some kind of earthing mat or, or grounding mat. You can then connect these with a cable that runs all the way outside and as a, you get a sort of metal conducting rod that just gets pushed into the soil, into the ground. Now, if you can't do that because maybe your, your house is too big or you live in an apartment, for example, you can get a cable that connects into the mat uh, and then that goes into the earth pin of an electrical socket, which works too. And if you live in a country where the plug socket has multiple pins in the UK, for example, a lot of the mats may look like they don't have a UK plug adapter because the pin is singular. But trust me, that's okay. It's just because that single pin goes into the earth connector of your wall socket without needing the other pins that you normally get uh, with other plugs. And make sure you keep the socket off too when your mat is plugged in. Or even easier than that for some of you and something that's free, depending on how your house is set up, you could even just maintain contact with a radiator for periods of time because radiators are earthed to the ground to prevent electric charge buildup. So with all of the options, I'm sure there's plenty for each of you to, to try out. But where's the evidence that your body actually does this when you ground yourself? I'll link to a study in the description below that experimented with two groups. One group was doing some yoga while on a grounding mat and the other group had just a normal mat. The grounded group had lower measured blood viscosity, whereas the other group didn't. I'll also link to another study which got people to sit just nice and relaxed while being grounded using a wire that went to a connecting rod that was pushed into the ground outside. After literally just sitting there and doing nothing else, the grounding reduced the blood cells' ability to aggregate together into a clump by increasing the zeta potential. Now, there are some flaws in the studies, like number of subjects, for instance, but I think the percentage of subjects in both studies that experience this effect is very significant and it suggests that even if you did it with a much larger group, you'd get the same findings because of the experimental controls that were in place, the control of the independent variables. Now, if you're interested in a good earthing or grounding mat for yourself, I'm not going to recommend a brand or link because for some reason, whenever I recommend things on this channel, people in the comments seem to think this is some money-making scheme to trick you all even when I don't have an affiliate link, so there's no way I could make money from you buying what I recommended. I don't understand it, but it is what it is. And so I'm gonna to listen to you, I'm gonna refrain from saying which mat I personally use as a result of that. My advice though is to, to get both a mat that you can use at your desk during the day, as well as something that you can actually put in your bed so you can sleep grounded too. 
Um, I've even heard that nowadays there's shoes coming out which allow you to conduct the ground even as you walk along, so you don't have to take them off and walk barefoot to get earthed.